Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome, welcome uh, to this uh, very exciting session today. We, uh, we're going to cover uh, geometric design. What uh, you need to realize is that uh, all the topics that we will cover today will be 20% of what you will see in the morning exam. And that's significant. Uh, what we cover is under the topic of, uh, they call it transportation. But if you uh, read it very carefully in the NCES document, uh, under transportation for the morning exam, uh, they only have uh, geometric design. What we cover will be horizontal curves, vertical curves, horizontal curve offset, vertical curve offset, sight distance, and uh, within each one of these topics, I have uh, several examples. and. Uh, Again, we, we will cover all the topics under the topic of uh, geometric design, 20% of the morning exam. So uh, please pay very, very close attention to the, today's presentation because you will see problems similar to what we covered today on the exam, definitely. And those of you who will be taking the transportation um, exam in the afternoon, you will have uh, these kinds of problems uh, in the afternoon as well. Okay, um, under the horizontal curve uh, topic, let's begin with uh, assuming that you are traveling on a, uh, a straight uh, road, let's say we have uh, you're traveling, let's assume uh, on a on along a uh, straight line like this. and then there is uh, you, you want to travel and change direction to a different alignment. Now, what we need to do is provide a smooth transition between what we call the back tangent and the forward tangent. So the first alignment that you're traveling on will turn into a, in this case, a simple curve, which is also called a circular curve. And then you begin traveling on the second or the next alignment. Now, when we introduce the topic of horizontal curves, exactly it is that transition from the first alignment to the second alignment. There are certain terminology that we need to learn. And throughout this uh, presentation, we're going to talk about these things. One is over here. Please take a look at the left-hand side of the screen, PC. Who can tell me what PC stands for? OK. Uh, point of curvature, Jeremy is saying point of curvature. Many of you are saying point of curvature, absolutely. So point of curvature, here is what you need to recognize. That is the point where the back tangent, uh, the, the first uh, uh, alignment stops and the curve begins. All right, so that's the point of curvature. Now, tell me this, that same point, is also referred to as TC. 
Who can tell me what TC stands for? That's the same point. It's just a different uh, name for it. TC, all right. It's called, guys, TC stands for tangent to curve. So that's tangent to curve, all right? And then there is a third, uh, third uh, way to represent that very same point. It's called BC. B as in boy, C as in uh, Charlie. So BC. Who can tell me what BC would stand for? You're absolutely right. Uh, Ian says uh, beginning of curve. Matthew also is saying beginning of curve. And the reason I say these three different uh, terms because interchangeably they do use on the test the, uh, these three names. All right, So you need to recognize what they are talking about. Now, what about the point where the curve ends and the, the next alignment begins. Well, you see on the right-hand side, that's called PT. And uh, that's PT stands for point of tangency, point of tangency. All right, now two other things that I want to mention here, and then we're going to move on. This highlighted blue, line, that is the distance we call back tangent, and then the next alignment, the next blue line that you see is uh, the forward tangent. Uh, let's go to the next slide, slide number five. When you look at this slide number five, there are various uh, components of a horizontal curve that, are, that have been identified here. I'm going to walk you through the next few slides, and each slide will uh, highlight one of these uh, components, and we'll talk about each one. Let me tell you how these kinds of equations, uh, these kinds of problems on the test work. Are you guys looking at this slide number five? You see all these different components. What they will do is they give you uh, two or possibly three of these different components represented by different nomenclature. And then they ask you to find the other variables. All right? So we need to understand what each of these letters represent. And if we are given maybe two or three of them, how do we find the rest? Well, in order to do that, uh, we need to know the relationship between the various components. So next, we will look at equations that govern those relationships. All right. The very first component we're going to look at this is, remember, for a simple horizontal curve. The first component is the radius. What you re need to recognize is that a simple uh, horizontal curve is a circular, which means it's part of a circle. It's part of a circle. And what do we know about a circle? Well, we know that each circle has a radius. And you see each one of those red lines that I've highlighted, that's the radius of this circle. And then, again, each circle has a center. So that center we call the center of curvature in this case. Now, the equation in the bottom of this uh, page, and I'll place it in, in this box. This is a very important equation, so make a note of it, please. R is equal to 50 divided by sine of 1 half d. Um, obviously, R is, is the radius. But this equation gives you the degree of curvature, which is d, 
in this equation. Take a look at this equation. But what I want you to highlight is this is the equation you uh, use to relate the radius and D on the chord basis, on the chord basis. Put this in a box, chord basis. What it means, I will talk to you in just a few minutes. And also, you may ask, what is the degree of curvature? What is, what is it and what does it represent? Please give me a couple of minutes. I will define that for you as well. Next slide gives you another equation. We call that the curve equation. But this is on the arc basis. Remember, the, la the, the equation we looked at in the previous slide was on the chord basis. This is on the arc basis. So if you, if you uh, are expressing the relationship between the radius r and the degree of curvature on the arc basis, this is the equation that you must use. Now, the next slide, this one, um, I would not worry too much about the calculations that are shown in the bottom. But if anyone among you is wondering how we came up with that number, 5729.58, well, this equations on this page show you the calculations that comes up with that strange number. But uh, if you're not curious about that, don't worry about it. This is not something on the test. But the equation will be. All right, now, on slide number 10, the equation that we are looking at gives us a relationship between all right, now let me highlight this between what I call the tangent. All right, so there, remember there is a back tangent and a forward tangent. Then we have in this equation R, which is we already talked about it, it's radius. And then there is this third parameter, which is I. Now, you need to understand exactly what that I is. That's an angle. And that angle is referred to as the, let me change the color here. That angle is called the, the intersection angle. You see that here? That's very important because in most of the calculations, we need to know that angle. So it's the intersection angle. And please pay attention. The intersection angle is the angle between the extension of the back tangent and the forward tangent. The word extension is very important here, OK? So the angle between the extension of the back tangent and the forward tangent is defined as the intersection angle, and we use the letter I for it. Joseph is asking, what is the difference between arc and chord basis? As I mentioned uh, before, uh, I will define that. Just give me a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm sure that is, that's the question that many of you are interested in, and we will define that in just a minute. And Meredith is asking the un units for D and R. Um, D is, is, is an angle. We'll, we'll talk about that. All the angles, by the way, uh, that we talk about, all the angles are in degrees. Every angle that we will mention today, it is in degrees. All right, uh, slide number 11 gives us the relationship between what we call the long chord. Now, please recognize that the long chord is always a straight line. Not necessarily horizontal, but it is a straight line. And it connects, connects PC to PT. All right? 